Hi everybody, just another quick Steam Deck video, and this is for people who may be thinking about getting a Steam Deck and are not wondering, well how does it get around the fact that it doesn't have a keyboard and mouse, and yet you can go into something like uh, the desktop mode, or maybe certain games where you need to use a keyboard or mouse. You know, what, what's the solution that the Steam Deck offers, and is it any good? Well, one of the things you can do is you can Bluetooth a keyboard and mouse, external keyboard and mouse, to your um, Steam Deck. Or, in this case, I've got one of those little dongles. So this is like a wireless keyboard and mouse that... So the, my Steam Deck here is sitting on this, this dock. And in the back of the dock, there's some USB connections, and there's a little dongle that goes in, so I can I can use a keyboard and mouse like this. However, obviously, the point of the Steam Deck is that it is mobile, um, and the and the kind of the built-in feature it has are these trackpads here, and these work incredibly well. You can probably just about see the mouse pad, mouse pointer moving around. Um, I would advise, however, you turn the Steam Deck haptics off for the off for them because it feels a bit odd when they're rumbling away when you're moving around. Um, and this works very well for games where you need to use a mouse um, and obviously when you're doing applications and stuff. So the kind of the, the things that kind of replace the mouse buttons are the triggers on the top of the Steam Deck. Let me, let me uh, if I unplug it there, you'll be able to see. So on the top, we've got, got these triggers, R2 and L2. Um, and it might sound a bit counterintuitive, but R2 is left click and L2 is um, right click and you might think well it's the opposite way around isn't it but it does make sense when you do it because your right click button normally right cl click finger on your mouse is normally your right finger isn't it um, and so it makes sense to press the, you know, that button to do to do that um, and then you kind of move your thumb around on the left one that this one the one on the left kind of acts a bit like a d-pad sometimes um, yeah, uh, depending on kind of what mode what mode you're in as well, and it works very very well. You can tap on the um, D pad as well, I think, and in certain situations that'll activate it. But generally, you're doing it with the triggers like so, so that works very well indeed. Now, the other thing though that I should mention before I go is um, custom controller app, uh, applications as well. So, if for example we go into um, so we go back into gaming mode. Just the, the Steam Deck when you fire it up basically is in gaming mode, which is kind of big picture mode from from Steam, and then you can choose to go into desktop mode. Obviously, normally you're going to have it in your hands and you're working uh, like that. Um, but obviously, what the Steam Deck is trying to do, just like this uh, Lenovo Legion Go or the um, Rug Ally, they're kind of trying to fit a square peg into a round hole with trying to have PC games running on a mobile device that basically is based around sort of thumbsticks and triggers and things like that, basically like an Xbox or a PlayStation controller. Um, and certain games just, you know, d don't want to play. So an example of that would be something like Armour. Um, so if you go into Armour, though, and then you go into the little controller icon there, what you can find is if you go into Browse Community Louts for Games Without Official Controller Support, you can find within community layouts um, controller and other key bindings that members of the community have made to work with things like Xbox controllers or, or PlayStation controllers, or much recently with the Steam Deck controllers as well. Because the thing that the Steam Deck adds is you know is these is your, your trackpads and also the extra uh, four buttons that are on the back as well. And this means that in certain games where really you'd often need to use a keyboard and mouse, like Armour or like Daisy, for example, you can go into community layout and you can check them out and it kind of tells you, you know, what the different things are. The catch is there's often quite a lot to learn because there's a lot of um, numbers and keys that are normally um, bound to different buttons on your controller. So it is, it is a little bit more difficult. Hopefully with time depending on how old the game is, you may well see if the Steam Tech and or the Rug Ally and the Legion Go and other handheld Windows PCs become more popular, maybe we'll see a lot more developers who are developing keyboard and mouse only games really developing controller profiles for them as well. To be honest, for Armour 3, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I know Armour Reforger has got um, 
uh, control options for PC where you can use a gamepad and DayZ has the console version so I think DayZ should get them at one point but maybe older games you know would devs ever go back and add them probably not but there we go they're the sort of different options you have for how the Steam Deck and Valve have solved the keyboard and mouse problem you can Bluetooth or use a dongle with a deck to attach a keyboard and mouse and actually do it that way and then you've got the really really good Steam um, the, the mouse track pads and triggers that work very, very well. And then you've got custom key bindings as well. So there we go. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have it, like, want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And I will, of course, see you again soon.